Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's pray. Let's pray. Yes. Let's pray. Yes. Father, yes. we thank you, Lord, for this morning. We thank yes. you for waking us up, Father. Yes. We, uh, yes. Father, we just pray for all those uh, yes. in this uh, are less fortunate of those that are going through uh, traumas right now, Father, especially those in uh, in Vegas, all those people that died and were killed and, yes. and uh, a horrific uh, 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 the horrific scene that they've seen is going to stay with them for a long time. Father, we pray for them. We pray for uh, their health. And uh, Father, we pray for those in Puerto Rico and uh, Houston and Florida that are still recovering from uh, uh, these devastating hurricanes that came through. And we pray for this uh, next hurricane that's coming up the Gulf right now, Lord. That, uh, that you would just uh, take the wind out of it. Amen. Take that wind out of it, Lord, Father. Uh, Father, we thank you, Lord, that we had the opportunity to be here and, and to worship you and to uh, sit here and minister the word uh, to one another, encouraging one another uh, as you have commanded us to do, Lord. We thank you for that. Thank you for the men that, and uh, women that uh, came together to uh, do this event that we did Wednesday, uh, 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 giving away 18,000 pounds of food and, and taking them down to uh, a needy community. Lord. Thank you for the volunteers that came along uh, with us, uh, those that are here and, and that made it happen. So, Father, we have so much to be thankful for, Lord. And sometimes... Uh, we don't know, or we don't think, you know, but we're thankful, Lord, Father, that we are able to sit here and do what we're doing elsewhere as we can do this, Lord. Yeah. Father, we pray again that you be with us, bless the food that we're about to eat, Lord. We pray for Mr. Gordon. Yeah, that's true. Mr. Gordon is not doing well, and Father, I pray he comes to the senses, Lord, Father. And, uh, oh, Father, we just thank you, Lord. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Uh, in First uh, uh, Philippians, it says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with joy. You all. Would you say Okay. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, been confident of this very thing. That he who began a good work in you will complete, complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. I love that scripture. That was uh, one of my anchor scriptures for me. That he says that he who began a good work in you is faithful to complete it. Hallelujah. Now sometimes you think about that. I don't know about y'all, but I think as a God, I remember there was a song, uh, uh, Keith. Smith, like that. Uh, Keith Green? Green. He sang a song uh, back in the day when I, I got saved. And I was uh, going across the, high, uh, the Howard Franklin. And uh, they were playing that song. And I'm just driving and I'm listening to that song. That he who began oh, yeah, a good work in you. You believe it? Oh, that's a beautiful. And I'm just driving that car, and I, I remember I, I heard that song, and I had to pull off to the curb or to the rest area when they had a rest area. <laughs> remember they had a scenic route? You could pull off, and you could, yeah. And I just started to cry. And I said, Lord, thank you that you who are faithful to complete the work that you started in me. Yes, you know, I mean, it's been a long time, and uh, well, that's, that's that's really when I gave my all to the Lord. I said, Lord, here I am. And that was such a good word. A good word for me. So the day of, yes, as it is right for me to think of this for you all, because I have you in my heart in as much as both in my chains and in the de defense and the confirmation of the gospel, you all are partakers with me of grace. For so God is my witness how greatly I long for you all with the affection of Jesus Christ. Now, who's writing, who wrote this book? Paul, right? Yeah. 
Aretha. And here he is. Uh, he, he bound up and all that. We're all, going through all our struggles, going through all our stuff, and uh, being joyful. And, you know, that takes a lot of faith and a lot of a lot of uh, love for the Lord, man. A lot of Philippians he, four thirteen. Huh? A lot of Philippians four thirteen. You like that? Yeah. And it, it is so it, it, it is so awesome for me. Uh, uh, to four thirteen. What did I say? Four thirteen. It says. It said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthen me. Nevertheless, you have done well that you share in my distress. You know, and uh, again, with all the, I just was thinking about the, the men that came down from that church in Pennsylvania. 18,000 pounds of food, great bunch of guys, a, a pastor and all. Uh, these guys, man, I, I don't know, uh, you know, I spent a little bit more time uh, with them uh, than you did, Mark, but just listening to their testimonies, and these guys are totally sold out for the Lord, and they're all our age, you know, and they're all broken, messed up physically. Yeah. You know, one guy has a, a, a thing in his back, electrical thing, you know, because of the pain and, uh, that he had. Damn, Juno. Yeah. And then uh, uh, other guy had uh, had a, a, a open heart surgery, and uh, one had cancer. These are old guys, you know, like us with gray hair and stuff, you know. But they didn't think of robbery <coughs> to uh, uh, they t uh, to come down here and to work like they did uh, to get this thing done. Uh, and to me, it's so encouraging. I mean, it's so encouraging that you find guys that are willing to give the time, talents, and the treasures uh, uh, to serve other people. And, and that's a good thing. It's a great thing. So, you know, there's, uh, there's still hope for us. You know, there's hope for us. And I want to thank uh, Mark. And we had a great crew that came out with us. And, uh, I mean, we just had fun. I don't know about y'all, man. We, I think we, we had fun. We had a great time. We wore ourselves out, but we did it. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, <laughs> he came in. You don't realize, you don't realize that until it's all said and done. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? When you do that, though, at least when you lay down your head at night, thank you, God. Thank you, God. That you see, you see the smiles on people's faces. You know, you, you feel the joy, the anointing of God uh, upon uh, the efforts that was done and the release. You know, so it was good. So I just want to thank all all you guys that make things possible, uh, so that we're able to uh, do what He's called us to do. How how did the people? Receive you were they ten or first? Did they know it was God? I was just curious the mood of the people and how they were, they the were, Holy they, Spirit works among. They were expecting. Uh, they were uh, anxious. Huh? They were anxious. The truck oh, yeah. took an hour later after we got there. So yeah. we there. At yeah. We uh yeah we got we got a, 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 a late start, but you know what? I like what they did because you know uh, Pastor John uh, from New Life Church. Uh, is that from New Beginnings? Whatever. Anyway, uh, is Azalea, uh, you know, Pastor John Eldridge. Eldridge, yeah. Well, they took all the stuff out and bagged it. Yeah. Then they put everything back. Yeah. That was a lot of work. That was yeah. a lot of work. A lot of work. But the benefit of that is they made up how many, how many hundreds of bags that. When we got there, <clears throat> uh, one guy uh, loaded up his, uh, his Escalade with uh, bags. So he got there first, and there were some people waiting <clears throat> in there. And uh, so, you know, uh, we went up there, I started talking to them, and, uh, you know, asked them where they were from and all that. Some of the, a lot of from Puerto Rico, uh, Nicaragua, places like Mexico. And uh, so before we give it out the food, I said, no, let's pray, because that's what we're about. We're not here just to sling uh, uh, hash. Uh, 
We're here to share the gospel. So we pray, and and the, and the people are so receptive. You know, matter of fact, that uh, uh, John gave the person a bag. I said, no, you can't do that. We got to pray for the lady give him a bag, the bag back. <laughs> but as we are starting to pray, man, I'm praying. I didn't, I didn't see none of this stuff, but there was, uh, somebody said there was a rainbow that came out, and then it started to sprinkle. So, it, the, you know, that's just the Holy Spirit, though, man. You know, ain't nobody running away. I mean, I just told well, that Latter-day rain. Some lady uh, that, 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 that was with a cane, she was just telling me her testimony on how God has delivered her and helped her and, and all this, you know. So when you take the time and to talk with folks and, and so what's up, man? What's going on? Give me a testimony, you know. It's really joyful and you know that you're in His perfect will. Amen? In His perfect will. And... Uh, just, uh, I'm thankful for uh, uh, for those that are, are able to do that, and we're a part of that in a form of fashion. So, so amen, amen yes. to that. It was a blessing to see everything out of that truck at the end of the night. <laughs> <laughs> made a long day, huh? Oh, it made a long day. It was tiring, man. But you know what? We got, we got home at 10:30, 11 o'clock. You know that night. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, to start. Yeah, we stopped for a quick uh, brunch at we, KFC. We started from early in the morning, getting ready to do stuff, and we went over there. So it was a long day. I pity no. the guy uh, from Pennsylvania because they had to wake up at eight o'clock in the morning and hit the road and go home. Parish, yeah. Yeah. Oh my! Yeah. 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 All right. That's twenty to twenty-four hours. Yeah, and they just did the three City. days of sleeping on concrete and. So we just want to just thank the good Lord, and you know what? That's what we're, that's what it's about. The kingdom of God. You know, uh, we are uh, just think about the, the those that have lost everything. You know, that's why I, I love that scripture in Philippians that the work that He started in you. You know, He got to start working on you from the day that you conceived. You know, he, I mean, uh, you were you were uh, an apple in His eyes. Before you, even all that, from the beginning of time, that he thought of every one of us, every one of us, we were in his mind, and uh, that's why he died on that cross. Isn't it wonderful, man? Yeah. And uh, we just don't realize the uh, the complexity of, of sometimes of the cross. There's a complexity of the cross of you know the engineering. And everything that's gone that's happened to uh, for Christ to be on that cross and to be given us the opportunity to go share the gospel. Don't get so caught up in your own lives, guys. Don't get so caught up in your own lives. Now, did, how did the circumstances come about that King City of all places, or how did that need? I'm curious how the Lord worked to put it on somebody's heart all the way from oh, yeah. Pennsylvania to end up <laughs> on no blame I mean, you know, uh, it's like a kingdom Pastor, connection. Pastor John called me and told me the situation. Go ahead, brother. We prayed for him, man. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we we prayed for him. Yeah, yeah, you better get out of here. I got a over here, back man. There. Yeah. Well, Pastor John called me, asked me if I knew of a place. I said, well, I don't know, but uh, on my Facebook, I, uh, uh, Bruce Wright, uh, which is a very radical individual, uh, individual advocate, very for the advocate. Home. <laughs> and I try to stay away from it, uh, you know. But I called them, and they, they were doing, they did something over there. So I asked them, "Hey, man, do you know what do you, uh, of anything going on? You know, where we could get involved and do something?" So he suggested the place, and so we went out there and the situation out and okay let's do it so the need was there yeah the need was there and so Sorry. and uh i was hoping that we were able to establish a work there but they have a lady there and she's part of uh bruce wright's uh, group ah. and so i kind of the good, because they get so political <laughs> And I, said, and I was preaching her and said, honey, I, I, I am not political. I am so happy with what you do, the advocacy that you do. Your, uh, and she just Pancakes. went to, uh, oh, yeah, to Washington, D.C. to protest. 
uh, uh, oh. Picard and Puerto Rico. Wait, this is not going to be a while. So, whatever we do, it's all about the kingdom of God. You know? so, not much. I'm just curious how that, yeah. how that worked out. Uh, Whoop. Top off. <laughs> You got bread. I know it's a little bit late to, to say something about this, but uh, three weeks ago when the hurricane hit and stuff, just before that, the meeting that we had before this place got shut down for whatever time, and uh, I remember Sam's talking about be sensitive to those that are around you. No, you know, and no, no, uh, afterwards. You know, and the morning of the, of the aftermath of that, that hurricane, you know, the words came back to my mind, you know. So, first thought in my mind was, I'm going to check on the neighbors, okay, because I live in an old neighborhood, old houses, and, you know, storms, the wind don't go good with termite infested houses around you and stuff. <laughs> so, I walk, I walk out the door, look down the street, and the neighbor had a huge tree come down right across his garage and wipe the garage out completely. Mm. Well, he's, he's a guy in his, his 30s or maybe close to 40 and he has kids. So I decided I'll go down and check on him. So I went down in the morning to check on him and uh, he come out and told me, yeah, well, we're fine. The tree hit the garage and no one was in it, fortunately. You know, so while I'm talking to him, he's in a fairly new neighbor, and I really I didn't know him, so I used it as an opportunity to talk to him a little bit and stuff, and began a friendship, basically. But while we were talking, the neighbor next to him that I've known for a long time is a big guy, an older guy. He'd been in the hospital and such, and while we were there, we could hear him yelling. He, while we were there that morning with that, he fell in his bathtub. Oh okay. no! So we had the we had the and he didn't want help getting out, but he had been in the hospital. So we called the fire department. So the fire department shows up, mm -hmm. comes on in, gets up, and, he, and he's too weak to stand afterwards. Oh, wow. So they took him out by ambulance to the hospital. Mm -hmm. and, you know, but again, being sensitive. To that still small voice, you know, it, it in the right came place back to me wrong, right during time. that time. Which, you know, this is the work of the Holy Spirit, you know. And I don't need to take over anything, but, uh, but going back to the very first scripture that you brought up tonight, or today, should I say? <laughs> I was there last night with him. So. You've been here that long. <laughs> Deal in. It said, in Philippians 1 6, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, he began a good work in you. This isn't Jesus beginning the good work in you. It says that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith, right? Yeah. He's done, you know, he's the finisher, you know, the plan of God was initiated by him but the work is the work of the holy spirit okay and if you look at this it, it uses the word he capitalized the personal pronoun it's not a spirit see people think it's a movement the holy spirit is just a move of god and, and don't understand that he's a personality that's a personality this part of the trinity that supposedly you can't prove in the bible you know but this is the holy spirit himself being addressed as a person yeah, you know, he's our comforter yeah. he begins the work in you I mean, yeah. it, he does the work in you excuse me you know if we sit there and try to make ourselves into what God's want will fail. Mm -hmm. What God wants will fail. That's the truth. Because it's the Holy Spirit that does the work in each individual to bring him to the point of including sealed. When you receive the Lord in your heart, you are sealed by the seal of promise of the Holy Spirit. He's our guarantee of what's coming. Your guarantee. You know, it's, that's my child. That's how God puts his seal on. You're my child. 
You know, who's going to break that seal? Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can anything Amen. separate you from the love of God? Scripture says. Amen. 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 Height nor depth nor. Thank you. Good. Anybody else? No, I'm good. I'm good. You know, uh, <laughs> Any other comments? Any other comments? Praise the Lord. You know, uh, sometimes you come in, sometimes you got something, God gave you something, you know, I got a pretty this morning, I'm trying to figure out, I'm so tired, worn out. Say, Lord, what you got for me today? What you got for us? You know, God speaks to y'all too, you know. This time you got something that, uh, Okay, Papi, so yeah, be, oh, you will? You sure? Yeah. Hey, take this with you. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this is uh, all of us working together, you know. And whatever as, uh, God puts something in your heart, you know, let's do it, you know, because uh, I'm just supposed to facilitate, or I am, or well, you know, everybody's a facilitator because God and His Word, you know, so much Word in us. That everybody in here needs to be a part of it. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, what is your name, Chris? <laughs> I, I, was, I was so happy to see your. Uh, I was so happy to see your uh, your wife uh, last yes. night. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. Good. she is doing good. Yeah, I was so happy to see her. Right? Yeah, we're glad to have you once you come yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. So it was it was pretty good. I'm, I'm I'm confident of that. What he was talking about could have seemed. And a lot of times like a coincidence and we all know that if you've been on divine appointments you understand that coincidence. God's God's, God's sedence, or yeah. whatever it's called so how come some people see have more divine appointments than another and I think part of it for us to have that is to think about it yeah. to look for it a little bit yeah, yeah. not to do the dead work Mm -hmm. Oh, I gotta do something. I gotta do something. Yeah. You know, let me go out there and save the world, whatever. Although that is, if that's in your heart, yeah, that's yeah. in your heart, because we get sidetracked. Yeah. But sometimes if we just listen. Again, the still small voice that he talked about brings the coincidence. Yeah. Proverbs sixteen thirty three says, "The lots are cast, but to dispose of are the Lord." And I amplify the thing very well. Though these things seem accidental, the order of the Lord. Order of the Lord. Amen. Yeah. But you know and that that's when you know, and there's nothing better than doing yeah. a good work, yeah. not a dead but work. Back when I used to dead work a group where, yeah. of guys to uh, Clearwater Beach, you know, and we had a street evangelizing stuff, and you get a group of people together, you tend to want to, there's one mouthy one that wants to argue with, you know, and you tend to want to spend all your time with them. But I had to learn. That wasn't a guy God had me there. It was the guy in the back that was listening to every word and was real quiet. Yeah. Just leave this guy, go back there and talk to him, and you can lead him. If to the we Lord. listen a little more, and, and I'm guilty of it, I think we all are. Uh, uh, you know, we don't. Uh, those who have ears, let them hear. Mm -hmm. Amen. Sometimes my ears aren't on. <laughs> you know? Well, you know that still small voice could be magnified. Let this mind be in you that identifies Jesus. Glory. Nice yeah. that. Nice that. Good one. I'll give, I give you guys an example. The other uh, the other day when I was with this guy, uh, the guys who went for breakfast, uh, the guys from Pennsylvania, and we were sitting at a table. Uh -huh. Oh, again. We were uh, sitting at a table, and I was like sitting here, and all of a sudden, I don't know why I did it, but all of a sudden, I like I went like this, and there was a guy sitting at the table, and uh, he looked a little bit distraught. So I didn't have to think about it. I didn't have to think about it. I just got up and went there, like it was moved by the Holy Spirit that He woke, He, he lifted you up, and I went to the guy. Now here's a guy that uh, 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 moved, uh, drove in from. Uh, Ruskin or somewhere, not Ruskin, yeah, Ruskin somewhere. He came there because he was going to, go to Winmore for oh. detox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was just so distraught. He's uh, he's 60, uh, eight, seven, whatever, wow. alcoholic and all that. And he was just like this, and he says, "I need some help." I said, "Yeah." Well, I'm too drunk. 
to go in and read to, No, to drive my car to Winmore. Oh, wow. Can somebody drive my car to Winmore? Wow. Well, I ain't got time to take you over there. What's your problem, man? Thanks no, for breakfast, brother. That wasn't yeah, what breakfast. happened. Thank you, man. God bless you. But we, uh, well, uh, Lewis and I worked on that. Lewis drove his car over there, and I picked him up. See, the Spirit of God is always around. Amen, brother. And if you have please. your radar on, he that has God ears, God let him God. hear. God will open the doors and you can minister the I'd God. I'd love to stay, people, guys. Right? But I gotta go open the business. And, uh, All right. Oh my God! Look who's here. Excuses, excuses. Hey, hey, uh, Elsie. Yeah. Look who's here. Hey. 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 You're too late, huh? You guys done? Good no, morning, everybody. All right. Hey, Pastor. Never too late. Right over there. I think. Hey. And uh, but if you are, if you avail yourself, open your mind, your heart. God will direct you right yeah. where you're at, right yeah, in this restaurant. You know, that's you why. I eat breakfast, man. Uh, that's all right. When, you, when, you, when you're in places, I, okay. right. I don't know about you guys, when you're raised in the inner city or whatever, you're always, your eyes are always mo are moving forward because you don't know who's coming behind you or whatever. You're always on guard, right? And it's the same with the Holy Spirit, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. always opportunities to share the gospel I'm if you allow yourself <laughs> to be used by Him. All right, well, that's no, no, I gave him If we're so caught up in what we got to do, I got to do this. I'll put things off to the side when the Holy, the Holy Spirit oh, comes in. We have an opportunity, you know? Right. Just like what you did, you know? Yeah, it's nothing more than being sensitive to the Holy Spirit, you know, and that's, and then he does the work, you know, you don't worry about is it too hard, is it too easy, you don't think of anything like that, you just do it and move as he gives you a, you know, Sunday, uh, the other, again, it's a, it, the best places to meet is a restaurant, right? A waitress working at uh, Pollo Tropical. Her name is Jasmine. And Jasmine had, uh, she, I don't know, I think there was a tattoo go all the way around her neck, you know, like that. I'm looking at that. Really good girl. Real. Uh, so I asked Jasmine, do you know Jesus? She said, yeah, I know him. When I was a little girl, I used to go to church and all that. Then as she got older, then, you know, got wrong, in with the wrong crowd. And, and then they started uh, wondering about, uh, well, uh, there's so many gods. I said, there's only this one, this one guy. Uh, you know, she said, the book is, uh, contradicts itself. Well, you know, but she went on and on. And I'm sitting here like that looking at her. Okay. I said, Jasmine, hold on. Hold on a second, Jasmine. Do you believe, uh, do you believe right? And, yes, I do. Well, you know what? You're making me dizzy. I said, oh, <laughs> she goes, she went, blah, blah, blah. I said, girl, I said, well, let's pray. And, my, and and I told her who I was, gave her a card, and where I'm at. But we won't get together. Cause I, I liked her, nice girl, a young girl. So that we she uh, so we could talk because she has all these things, all the very same things that the young people have. You know, they get if they, they grow up in church and then they get out of church and then they meet all these people that start. Ah, oh, there's there's not just one God. There's many gods. There's not one way to go to to heaven. There's many ways to go to heaven. So you know, uh, they get filled with all these things, and so and they're all confused. And, and so so then you gotta start uh, tearing those walls down a little bit at a time. But you know what? She's still saved. I know she is. We prayed and she accepted the Lord and. But those answers need to be uh, addressed, and she needs the help. And so if we avail ourselves uh, to those opportunities to share the gospel, the gospel is going to be preached. But if we, we go places, well, I don't want to bother him. I don't know that person or what that, you know. God's going to say, hey, uh, you guys were over there at uh, Eight Ladder. And there was a person in the corner over there who needed some help. And the person kept looking this way. But nobody acknowledged him. What's, what about that? What's wrong with that? What, what, why didn't you guys do something? Why didn't you guys do something? Or why didn't you do something? You know, not do guys. Why didn't you do something? Well, I, I didn't want to interfere. I, I don't want to interrupt. But, yeah, you know, when we were at the, uh, I mean, the, uh, the uh, St. Pete Diner, 
and we had people come in there and this guy remember he sat down at uh, the other end can i join you yeah well he was going to commit suicide remember that one guy was going to commit suicide but you know he, we we welcome him to sit down we share the gospel with him he liked what he saw he felt the spirit of god that's what it's about man that's why we meet in a in, in a restaurant because the word is going around. People are hearing. People are seeing. You know what helps me sometimes is the <clears throat> if I'm in my own self, my own activities, and all of this maybe dead works or or, or just life. <clears throat> you know, Jesus sets us free. So if I stay or consciously contact to get the joy and His love in me, that releases me to see to hear again Amen. because otherwise I'm, and, and that's the biggest thing for me to get reconnected is just to go into his joy and that relaxes me and this the world kind of moves away and then I can see divine appointments otherwise I go through them they just go right by you know, miracle after miracle happen I don't see no miracles Lord anymore well, in my life I'm in a desert sure are because we're going right by you and they're all over and we, we ignore them how many of y'all ever take uh, martial arts Karate. I did I was a kid and, uh, <laughs> when I was a kid okay yeah, well, one of the things that they uh, you know uh, that's why I used to watch Kung Fu every week uh, Grasshopper I love that guy man you know you know <laughs> Jam, whatever that's, how, that's how he took martial arts. He watched Kung Fu. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> well, one of the things that they teach you, uh, whether it's martial arts, whether uh, uh, armed forces or whatever it is, that when they train you, you're trained. Not only do they train you physically, but they also train you uh, uh, mentally. That Almost when more you so. can sense when somebody is walking behind you or is coming behind you, right? Y y y y Y'all ever, you know? But see, I've that's, actually experienced that, 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 yeah. that's the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, the Holy Spirit is the same way. So, we're, we're in a boot camp. We're in a training, and and we, we have to refine the relationship that we have with the Holy Spirit because you know, just like I was sitting there, and, and all of a sudden, what I, why why did I turn around? Why did I just turn around? I had no reason to turn around, but there was the Holy Spirit, and the man was hurting. And I was, uh, and, and we were willing. And those guys over there, were, you know, the pastor came and talked to him and all that. See, when you're ready and about God's business, you got to be like those people, man. You're ready, you know. I'm walking somewhere. I'm, I, I'm always, li you know, you listen to what's behind you, man. Somebody come up behind you, or whatever, you know. And that's the way we have to be with the Holy Spirit. We have to refine the the Spirit of God inside us. We got to get sharp with the Spirit. Let Him move. But we get so busy. You know, so busy with our own lives, and your life is dull. Everything that you're doing is going to be uh, to ruin. And the only thing that you're bringing with you is the whole uh, is the people that you've been ministering to, uh, the people that accepted Christ. You know, your cars, your business, your this, whatever, all that is done. And you know, and, and what greater joy, you know, uh, uh, to give everything up. Oh, I, I gotta take care. Of it. You know, if you if you trust God. God said he would take care of you, right? Mm -hmm. He's going to take care of you. Amen. I don't know how you pastors or, uh, 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 that, that work by vocational. Yeah. You got a hard job. Yeah. You, you got this over here, you got this over here. I met a guy the other day, man. He, he, uh, I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not going to you know, I don't know nothing. Y'all just, this is what I'm saying. He's, he's taking Social Security already. Uh, and still working. And so, you have the opportunity now to, you know, uh, by vocational pastors, I take my heart, I think, I mean, I applaud them because it's a hard job. Not only are you dealing with your, uh, with your home and all that other stuff, but you're also dealing with the church stuff. And so you have to, uh, uh, I don't know, but whatever it is we do, we have to be ready in season and out of season. Be ready for what the Lord says. And when God said, well, when you had the opportunity, you went, oh, i got to make more money. i got to do this, do that. Okay, that's where you want to And I understand that because, gee, I want to go back to business again. I'm going to make some money. I'm going to do like Charlie, man. I'm going to start work, uh, doing, uh, 
doing hair. I used Charlie as an example on Sunday. I said, you know, uh, whatever's in your hand, and I told him uh, I had a scissor that he gave me. Uh, I gave it back to him, though. But anyway, I said, hey, anybody in here want a haircut? I'd be happy to, you know? And everybody didn't pick me up on it. Nobody picked me up on it. But, you know, I told him, this in my hand, it'll cut you, it'll, it, you'll, be, uh, you'll have a bald spot on your head and all that. But in his hands, it, uh, because he's been uh, 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 barbering for over 50 years, or no, 50 years, that old man. 70 years. No, it don't matter. <laughs> so anyway, it don't matter. So the point was that in his hands, what God has given to him in his hands, that's, those scissors are the tools that have led many people to the Lord. Because when they come to his barbershop and sit down, share the gospel with them. That's the tool they gave him. And then when he's shaving them, he asks them, are you going to accept Christ or what? <laughs> <laughs> he, he, led, he leads a lot of people to the Lord that way. You know? <laughs> so, you know, it's what's in your hand. This guy right here, he gave the best illustration yesterday. Him and I were talking about it. Tell them about the illustration about the electricity and the three wires. Oh, I'm an electrician, and uh, everywhere I go, they ask me, you know, what is your work? Is the word electricity is kind of funny. It takes neutrons, protons, electrons, they all move in a different way, and they make power. It's like God. Son, Father goes, Father, and the Holy Ghost is like three, but then again, they are one. How do you explain that? But yet, it's power. And, oh, they go, really? Very good. And that's how I get into God. Yeah. That was good. You know? And so, whatever it is that we're doing, whatever it is, you know, uh, uh, our tools, carpentry, whatever, printing, you know, whatever we do unto the Lord, you know, the way, because He's given everyone us a tool, a job to do. And but when we, uh, when, when we, if we start playing that game like Moses did, uh, well, I don't. I, 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 I can't talk. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, you know, he, what, what he said, who made the tongue, man? <laughs> who made the tongue? Right. And, 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 and that, you know, I'm just going to send error with you, man, you know? But what, what do I have? You got that, you got, what's that stick you got in there? That's what I was sharing in the gospel on Sunday. That stick in your in my hand is jack, it's nothing, it's all a piece of wood, it's lumber, you throw it in there, it's nothing, but in the hands of the of the Holy Spirit, in the hands of the uh, the one that God called and anointed and appointed, is it, it, it does miracles. Mm -hmm. You know? Wow. And, and, and it's powerful. And then the thing that was funny about it, really, I never really looked at it by, uh, like that, but I was listening, like when Moses took that stick and threw it on the on the ground, it would turn out to a snake and started running. <laughs> the man is going to uh, bring deliverance to a, a million of God's people ran. Mm -hmm. you know, I, mean, I, I don't know, I probably ran too. Mm -hmm. The other thing that was powerful though, here's something. When you pick up a snake, you're going to pick that snake up, you want to pick him up by the head so he won't turn around and bite you, right? Mm -hmm. But what did he do? He yeah, took yeah. him by the tail. Because now there's that power. See, that fear that he had, there's no fear no And then when God calls you to do something, it doesn't make sense, I, I, and you're going to have to take that snake by the tail. You're going to take that snake, whatever it is that he called you to do, take that stupid snake. Don't, don't be afraid. If he tell, When he told me to quit my job and, and open my business, I mean, quit my business to go out in ministry, it took a lot of faith. But I'm telling you right now, there ain't no greater joy in the world that you're going to have is to serve the Lord in the capacity call you to do. But when we do not want to grow old and, uh, and, and, and say, if I would have, could have, should have. Oh. And many of us are going to do that. Would have, could have, should have. You know, stop it. Stop when God speaks to witness to somebody, I've, I've found you know, see, I want you to witness to this guy. I try to pass that on to somebody. Well, I'm busy right now, you know. Yeah. I'll send I'll send Sam over and let him do it. God said no. I didn't tell Sam that. I told you yeah. right that to do that. Same thing impressed me once. I'm kinda of getting and this is when I was in prison, but I was getting ready for a word to give. And I was so busy studying, I had people, two people came by wanting to talk. 
I'm too busy studying God's Word to minister. <laughs> you know what I mean? That kind of got me a little bit. <laughs> I can't talk to you right now. I'm busy right. studying God's Word. So I sat in a church. And I'm be warmed and filled. It was. it was a big church, big mega church. It was in Tampa. And I sat there, and it was a Wednesday night. They had all, on Thursday, they had all these Bible studies that go on in this place. And I'm sitting, sitting there, and, and, and this person comes in. I want to talk. I need to talk to a pastor. I need some help. Uh, so, oh, a pastor. Hey, can, you know, so I knew some of the guys. Uh, no, no, I can't. I got, I got time right now. I got to go through a Bible study. Oh, no, no, I got time. I mean, I got. Everybody's going by, so I'm standing there. I'm sitting there. I'm get, I guess it's me. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, nobody had the time to stop and, and, and minister the gospel to the guy because you're so busy doing the work of God. Yeah, you know? That's where you got to watch that word. Yeah, and you're so busy. Oh, no, i got to go preach. No, no, well, wait a second. They can wait a second. Want to, you know, talk to him for a minute and bring him, bring him with you. Come on, man. all them sheep, man. Yeah. Go get that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah leave that. Leave, leave them all those sticky guys over there. Go get brought this one here. You know? That's right. Yeah. Take this black and bring him up here. Yeah, there you, there you go. Yeah. Hold him up. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, Bill Symbol, I think is his name, uh, uh, Brooklyn Tabernacle. Mm -hmm. And we're going to close with this because uh, everybody's got to go uh, places. But I, I got, matter of fact, I got it in here, man. I saved that video. The video was that man, they were doing a great worship and everything and beautiful and everything started to tone down and he had just preached his heart out and he was tired and he sat down on the steps to the platform and, and the people were just in, still praising and he sat down and, and then there was a guy his eyes got in contact, you know, like me and this guy and then uh, the guy was homeless, mm. uh, and, uh, and over there uh, where Brooklyn, in Brooklyn, man, number the homeless around where he's at, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the guy the, the night before he hadn't taken a bath a long time. He peed on himself, alcohol, food, whatever. He stank like all, oh, all, oh, whatever. And but uh, anyway, so he's looking at him. He's looking at me, and, and, and Bill's looking at him, and. Uh, he said, oh, it's one of these other guys. These guys that come in and they police the, the church, give him some money and this and that, you know. So they kept looking at him. So he told him to come over. So he started coming over, he said. So he, he reached into his pocket, you know, doing that Holy Ghost, uh, you know, a shuffle to uh, shake his hand and give him some money. And, and when, when he, as closer he got, the stronger the stench was. He was it was just nasty. He was puke. Uh, nasty, you know, and so when he went up there to give him the money, uh, he went like that. I don't want that money. I want that Jesus you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Ooh, about myself. Ooh. Ooh. I want that Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> and that that ministered to him. That 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 homeless guy ministered to him. Amen. He didn't want all that. All I want is that Jesus. Jesus. And he took that man. And he embraced it with the smell and everything. Hallelujah. And I want to share something with you that I don't know if you've ever experienced it because that stank, that smell, that rankness is nothing because when the Holy Ghost is there, then the spirit of the anointing yeah, oil the of God just starts to Hallelujah. it's a fragrance that comes. Oh, yes. And you don't smell that in the you know what I mean? Oh. And so and, and so uh, do we have the time? Are we uh, always blaming this person that this guy's no good. I mean, this guy's homeless. Go get a job. Go do this. Or you got a sheep in your uh, your, your fold that always comes to you, man. God, hey, what's he doing now? That man got more problems than you know. You know? Mm -hmm. And uh, but yet, you know, we have to keep that spirit in us that you know that. Man. Oh Lord. Give me the grace. Give me the grace. Amen. 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 So we're going to close in prayer. And Pastor's going to, uh, then he's going to take over. No. <laughs> Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this time that we had. We, uh, you were definitely present here. And uh, we thank you, Lord, for your anointing. We thank you for your spirit that's in us. 
Father, let us not be so busy uh, that we uh, don't have the time to do what you call us to do, Lord Father. Father, you, you know, if I don't make it to work that day because I'm ministering the gospel, I know, Father, you said that you would take care of every need that I have, Lord Father. So, Father, we just pray, Lord, that, that, that you, you continue to minister to us, to teach us. Holy Spirit, just whisper to us. Let us be ready uh, in season and out of season, Lord Father, to be moved by where you are. Moved by you, Lord. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you. So if we go bless today, you, Lord, Father, bless us. Please, bless God. the churches, the pastors yes, that are uh, represented here, the churches yes, that are represented here, Lord, Father. Yes, God. Bless them. Please, God. And continue to uh, uh, use them, Lord, yes, Father. Lord, God. And, Father, let us not be so critical, Father, because yes. we don't know the, the, the shoes that he's walking in yes, right Lord. now, Lord. Mm -hmm. Help us to be loving at all times, Father. In yes, Jesus' God. holy Jesus. name. Amen. 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 Amen.